Good morning everyone. Today I will be presenting on accuracy of intraocular lens power calculation in traumatic cataracts. I have no financial disclosure. So uh, ocular trauma is a major cause of preventable monocular blindness and visual impairment regardless of age, sex and geographical area. And traumatic cataract is very common sequel of ocular trauma. Ultimately it causes psychological, emotional and professional crippling of the patient. There are three treatment options for the ocular trauma. First, primary corneal tear repair in first sitting and uh, cataract extraction and island plantation in second sitting. Corneal tear repair and uh, cataract extraction in first sitting and we can put uh, IOL in uh, second sitting. And all three pro procedures we can pa perform in single sitting. Biometric can be challenging in open globe injury due to corneal surface irregularity or scar. So our aim is to compare the accuracy of IOL power calculation on the basis of post-operative spherical equivalent with respect to the following scenarios. First, primary versus secondary IOL implantation. Two, central versus paracentral corneal tear. Three, using same eye or other eye keratometer reading. Four, visual outcome difference using same eye or other eye excellent. Five, using same eye or other eye IOL power. So this is a retrospective study was conducted in Arvindai Hospital, Tiruna Valley by re, uh, retrieving data, demographic pre and post surgical data from patients who had undergone IOL implantation following traumatic cataract extraction uh, between 2018 to 2020 and total 61 patients were included. Patients who underwent cataract extraction plus IOL implantation following traumatic cataract development were included in this study and these were the exclusion criteria. <laughs> Thus, the patients were divided into five groups, same as discussed in our aim, and post-operative final character distance visual equity results were obtained and manifest refractive spherical equivalent was analyzed. So going to results, 82% uh, of male were affected and 56% of right eye is affected. And we have measured and compared post-operative mean refractive spherical equivalent between all subgroups to measure the accuracy of a scan biometry. So in group A, again divided into two subgroups. In first subgroup, there are 14 patients in which second IOL is implanted secondarily and we got minus 0.43 diopter of mean MRSE. And in 46 patients, we put IOL in primary sitting and we got minus 0.74 diopter of mean MRSE. And you can see in second group, uh, there is a minimum and maximum range of mean MRSE is minus 5.25 diopter to th plus 3. 0 adapter which is very much wide in group b central corneal tear group had a minus 0 0.41 diopter of mrse while paracentral corneal tear had minus 0 0.80 diopter of mrse in group c same eye carrying had minus 0 0.57 diopter of mrse and other eye carrying group had minus 0 0.61 diopter of mrse in group d uh, same eye excellent uh, group had minus 0 0.68 diopter of mrse while other eye excellent group had minus 0 0.03 diopter of mrse in group e same eye iol power had uh, minus 0 0.68 mean mrse while other eye iol group power, power group has minus 0 0.34 diopter of mrse out of 61 patient in one patient we used average of k reading excellent and iol power between two eyes and post operatively we got minus 5.21 diopter of mrse Coming to discussion, uh, age is in our study is ranging from 1 to 72 years and mean age is 29.59 years. And males were more commonly affected and right eye was more affected which is 55.7%. Comparing the post-operative spherical equivalent following primary versus secondary IOL implantation, our study shows that the IOL calculation is more accurate with the secondary IOL implantation than the primary IOL implantation. So here the comparison of MRSC between group A, you can see that 85.7% uh, of patients in which IOL was implanted secondarily got uh, MRSC of less than one adapter, while uh, only 63% of patients in which IOL IOL was implanted primarily got less than one adapter of MRSE. Here you can see an 8.2% of patient in which secondary IOL was implanted primarily got more than two adapter of MRSE, while none of the patient, none of the patient got uh, more than two adapter of MRSE in which IOL was implanted secondarily. So it suggests that it is better to do a scan biometry after cornea stabilization and perform secondary IOL implantation, though we have not studied accurate time for a scan biometry after trauma or primary surgery. So this is the reference. In group B, you can see if 72.7% uh, who had central corneal tear got uh, less than one adapter of MRSE. And if we consider same eye key reading, then 75.6% of patient got uh, MRSE less than uh, one adapter while other group had 57.8%. If we, but if you consider other eye excellent, then 77.7% uh, of patients got less than one adapter of MRC, while against 68.7% in other group. 
and if we consider same i i will power then 72.1% of patient got less than one adapter of mrsc so in conclusion biometry is more accurate in secondary i will implantation though it is not statistically significant uh, result can be better if we consider cmi carrying i will power and other excellent which again depends upon the condition of traumatic eye preoperatively these are my references thank you what do you think the reason behind uh, better correlation post uh, second in secondary implantation uh the stability of cornea sir so if we uh, uh, ask the patient to come for a second sitting for uh, cataract extraction or eye implantation then the we uh, will need to have some time for cornea to stabilize for keratometric reading and even if uh, the cornea lens and cataract traumatic cataract density is more so excellent variation will be more enter chamber depth lens thickness all the things will be like stabilizing oh. sometimes up okay what was the average duration between uh, the primary repair of corneal tear and the implantation when you did secondary sir repair? here in so many patients uh, uh, some patients came with uh, little of perforation so self sealed perforation so in those patient directly we did uh, cataract extraction with uh, uh, eye implantation some patient we had a uh, primary corneal tear and uh, in second uh, surgery we did cataract extraction with eye implantation so there is no specific time but it is ranging from uh, i think 15 days to 180 days and 360 uh, th uh, if uh, 180 to 200 days so what was oh. the deciding factor in that patient's choice or surgeon's uh, no uh, uh, surgeon's choice sir but uh, sometimes patient can come uh, earlier in our date so they so will be th exactly ready. that's what i'm asking like how yeah. how did you decide that we have to operate after 300 uh -huh. days or so right? that's after why sir i mentioned that days. exact time okay. of voice can biometry they, they haven't measure. done in the study, study but yeah. for the clinical perspective you have to see two corneal topographic okay. or at least a keratometric Statement. evaluation two visits one month apart if it is stable then that means that the cornea is stable, stable. then you can then proceed, you can proceed. Yeah, this whole about sir is skin biometry so it uh, considers the excellent also keratometric reading also and if you consider other eye or same eye i will power or carry no uh, no no confusion so here one thing is stabilization of the patient yeah one thing is stabilization of cornea hmm. if the cornea has stabilized in a corneal injury that means other things have stabilized by then second thing is once the cornea is stabilized 99% of the time we can do same i i o l biometry that means that mm. even in a traumatized eye we will have a predictive i o l position post cataract surgery better i o l positioning by doing a good biometry in a healed cornea or a yes. healed eye okay. so everything will become perfect it's not just the cornea but again a c depth would have formed by then if you have synecke that is also we know about it and anyway axial length is not going to change much no in addition to that in second year well you have a major advantage of the spectacle spectacle power you know so that is also a guideline once you know what correction the patient is uh, accepting mm -hmm. that gives you a very good line uh, good uh, sort of idea about what i will uh, to implant depending on where you are implanting it whether you are going to do a scleral fixation or whether they are putting it in the sulcus okay. so that is a major advantage at that time. Okay thank you